til dag for øje. that one again, won't we, band? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> well, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship at our Saviors this morning. I am Pastor Kiri. Pastor Maria is preaching this morning. Uh, if you are new to our Saviors, we would love to connect with you. We have uh, connection cards in the po pew pockets right in front of you in the pews. You can fill that out and place it in the baskets in the back or uh, turn it in at the reception desk. Special welcome to those of you who are worshiping online. If you're new to Our Saviors and to this online worship, we'd love to connect with you. We have a connection card on our website under Connect. Just a few things to highlight today. The first is that the Our Saviors annual meeting is next week. So we are one week away, and that will be immediately following this 1015 service. Uh, 
Whether you're going to the meeting or not, you are invited to stay for lunch. That will be right after the service. It is served by our youth who are going on mission trips this summer as a, a fundraiser luncheon for them. So please stay. It will be pasta, a pasta meal, and various other things. So that's next week right after this service. Our annual report is available on our website. There are also paper copies available at the reception desk. If you uh, didn't receive one online, you can pick one up there. Also, in worship next week, I think uh, the pop-up choir singing what service, Jennifer? Both services. Both services. And you'll be here for the annual meeting, so you might as well join the pop-up choir. And, and the lunch, and you may as well be in the choir, right? Just do all the things. Yeah. So you can still come. Come to one rehearsal and sing this really fun piece. I've heard a snippet of it down the hallway, and it sounds really neat. So this could be a chance to just see what's choir like. Rehearsal is on Tuesday night at 7. And then uh, finally, believe it or not, Camp WAPO registration is open for this coming summer. And for all of you, something to think about. They have a new camp that's for grandparents and grandkids. Uh, so it may be a neat time for you to think about. Uh, you can see more on your announcement sheet or go to the Camp WAPO website to learn more. Well, those are all of the announcements I'm going to highlight. You can read more on your sheet, but I invite you to stand as you're able, and we will share God's peace with one another from our places with a smile or a wave. Well, please remain standing for our opening song. Last week, we learned a new song called Yes, He Lives, and we're singing it twice this service, or the band is singing it twice. We played it for Prelude. Obviously, you were all listening. You learned it last week, so we're going to sing it again. Here we go. One, two, three.
We're in the middle of a sermon series about Jesus' call to us um, in our lives. And one of the hardest things, I think, uh, is when Jesus calls us to be bold over our fears um, and to have faith that he will topple down the giants in our lives. That's a hard thing to do. Um, so we're going to be singing about praising God um, through the fear, praising God, um, and uh, trusting him that he is going to have a breakthrough in our life and topple those giants too. Giants fall. 
And Jesus, you call us to be bold, to banish anxieties and to praise you. And that's often easier said than done. So often we give in to our human worry. Help us to set aside our fears and to follow your call, just as the disciples set aside their nets and followed you so long ago. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, it is time for the children's offering and message, so come on up, kids. Come on up and find a spot to sit. couple more coming. Well, good morning. Oh, uh, let's see. Abby, do you have the milk can? We'll do, do a little. Somebody is like, needs to get that in there. All right. Fabulous. Well, this is very appropriate. Actually, I'll borrow this if you don't mind for, oh, got another one. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's okay. Ah, it, it all fits about what I'm talking about this morning, so I'm like, well, let's do it. All right, well, good morning. Good morning. In just a few minutes, I'm going to be reading a Bible story to the grown-ups about Jesus calling his first disciples. And the first four disciples that Jesus called were fishermen. And you know what Jesus said to them? He said, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. That's kind of a weird thing to say, isn't it? Do you think Jesus meant, I'm going to give you a fishing rod that's designed to go out and catch people instead of fish? No, no that would be super duper weird. What Jesus meant was that he would have them spread God's love so that more people could be caught up in God's great big love for them. And so the first disciples followed Jesus and they spread God's love by feeding people and healing people and telling them about Jesus. Do you know who else follows Jesus? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We follow Jesus, right? Yeah, we follow Jesus. And that means that we spread God's love in all sorts of ways. And Leisha told me about a really big way that you have been working together to spread God's love. You know how you bring an offering and you put it in the milk cans on Sundays? Yep. Well, together, you have brought in so much in offering that you have been able to buy a bunch of farm animals for people around the world. There, I know, right? There's a board out in the rotunda. I don't know if you know it's out there. You probably do, but maybe not everyone in the room does. So I took a picture of it so you'll know what to look for. Out in the rotunda, there is a board that has little pictures of animals pinned up on it. So be sure you look for this out in the rotunda. Everybody else, take a peek out there and see what's on there. This ha it has pictures of all of the animals that you have bought through the ELCA's Good Gifts program. So that's you working together, working with our larger church organization that we're part of to buy chickens and bees and pigs and goats. Bees, bees yeah, that, they pollinate things so that crops can grow. Um, and do you know what else you bought? The kids get to choose together which animals they're going to buy. Some of you really wanted to collect $250 so you could buy a fish farm. And you did it. Woo! That's so awesome. And I don't know if you guys know this yet or not, but with your recent offerings, like in just the last month, you have bought, um, you have bought one of each of the animals on the board. So you bought another one of each of those animals, and drum roll, please, you have bought another fish farm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, it got given to someone else. So with all of these animals being given to people all over the world, you are not only to help, helping to feed those people now, but you're helping them to feed their families in the future because they're farm animals and they'll have babies and they'll grow and they'll lay eggs and all of that good stuff. So you are doing exactly what Jesus has called you to do. You are spreading God's love 
by feeding people, and that is awesome. And I am super proud of you guys. It's amazing. So let's fold our hands and close our eyes, and let's say a prayer. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for calling us to follow Jesus. Thank you for helping us work together to feed people and spread your love. Thank you for the first disciples. Thank you for the first disciples. Knowing how they spread your love helps us spread your love too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. If you are heading out for kids' ministry, you can head out the center aisle. I'll send this back with Abby. And if you're staying in, you can head back to your seats. Thanks for coming up. gospel for this morning comes from the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, for those of you who like to fish, this one's for you. And for those who don't like to fish, this one is for you too. <laughs> We've got actual fishermen and a metaphor, so it speaks to all of us. Perfect. Well, this is the third week of our sermon series, The Call of God, and today Jesus calls his first disciples. In the story of these four fishermen, we find an element of danger, an element of risk, and insights as to how we might answer Jesus' call to follow him today, including at least one insight that never occurred to me might be in this particular story. So I'll let you know which one that is when we get there. Well, most of us have heard this Bible story before, right? Jesus walks along the shore, calls out to two brothers to follow him, and they follow. Further on, he calls to another set of brothers, and they follow simple story, right? But if we look at the details, there is a complexity and a richness that we don't often notice. So welcome to the world of interesting details this morning. The story begins with almost a throwaway phrase, after John was arrested. If we think about it, this phrase does more than just tell us where we are in time. It tells us that Herod, the ruthless ruler of the area at the time, has arrested John the Baptist. Now, you and I know that eventually Herod has John executed. Fun fact, Mark's gospel was written after all of that happened, so the author knows it too, right? So this phrase tells us that there's an element of danger in this story. Jesus' message sounds an awful lot like John the Baptist's message. And John just got arrested. And now Jesus is calling people to follow him? This could end very badly. There could be legitimate fear on the part of these first disciples. Now there's another element of risk too. All four of these fishermen have good jobs. We know from later in the chapter that Simon is married and his mother-in-law lives in his house. So he's doing well enough financially 
to have a house and take care of his extended family. So he's doing okay. What will happen when he walks away from his job as a fisherman to follow Jesus? There's some risk there. And what about James and John? They're in their own fishing boat with their father when Jesus calls them. It's a family business, and they own their own boat. There are hired men involved. When they get up and leave to follow Jesus, they're putting the family business at risk, aren't they? It turns out there's danger and there's risk. And these four fishermen choose to follow Jesus anyway. As we make the turn to think about what Jesus is calling us to do, let's talk about what Jesus called these fishermen to do. The text says he called them to fish for people. In other words, to spread the good news so more people would be caught up in God's great love for them. And that's what I usually think of with this passage. But there's more to it. I'm telling you, it is fun detail day. Um, if we back up again to the beginning of the passage, we see the bigger picture. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. These are words of hope to oppressed people living under Roman occupation. People whose, Roman, whose local ruler is Herod, someone who doesn't have an issue offing his own family members when he thinks they're a threat to his power. This is incredibly good news, that the reign of God is finally breaking into the world in this way, that Jesus' very presence means that the kingdom of God has come near. And Jesus calls his disciples to help him in his work of spreading the kingdom. And when we look at the rest of the gospel, we see what it means to bring God's kingdom near. People are fed, people are healed, and the good news is preached to all kinds of people. That's what Jesus does, and it's what his disciples do. They turn the world upside down. They lift up the poor, the hungry, the excluded, and those whom their society deemed invisible. They worked to make the world a kinder, less hostile place. That's what the kingdom of God looks like. That's what those four fishermen were called to do, to work with Jesus to bring God's kingdom near. And that's what Jesus calls us to do as well to see where God is already at work in the world and to join in that work to bring God's kingdom near. To partner with Lutheran Social Services to welcome and help resettle refugees who have fled war-torn parts of the world. To travel to Guatemala to build houses for families and provide clothing for children. To work with our local food shelf to feed the hungry to work to change our society's problems so people won't need a food shelf, to walk with our neighbors as they deal with grief or medical issues or other struggles, to embody the good news of Jesus, bringing the kingdom near in word and deed. This is what Jesus calls us to do. And finally, here are the insights from our four fishermen about how we do this work, how we answer Jesus' call. First, we cast a wide net. Simon and Andrew fished by throwing large nets into the sea, and with those large nets, they pulled up all kinds of fish. They didn't have magical nets that only brought up trout or salmon, that only pulled up the good stuff. If they were fishing in the Midwest, they would have found bullheads in their nets, I'm telling you. Jesus came for all people, all kinds of fish, right? Jesus died and rose again for all people. God loves all people. So as we spread the good news, we spread it to all people. As we show love for our neighbors, we show love for all people. And that changes the world. Lifting up the downtrodden and the outcast and making the world a less hostile place a place with more love, a place where God reigns. Second, we mend our nets. 
James and John were in their boat mending their nets. When their nets broke or didn't work anymore, they knew it and they fixed them. This is the insight I did not know was in this story. When I realized it last week, I thought, this is reformation. What a Lutheran thing to do. Okay. Now, I know, I'm a giant nerd. Welcome. Uh, now, we don't have the monopoly on this, but as Lutherans, we are constantly looking at what we're doing, how we're following Jesus, and always reforming. If something doesn't work, we change, we adapt. Throughout the pandemic, we were changing almost daily because the world was changing daily. Coming out of COVID, the world is different. So as we spread the good news of Jesus, as we show love for our neighbors, we look for ways to do it differently. We pay attention to where our nets might need mending, and we adapt. This simple first century story of four fishermen dropping everything to follow Jesus has a complexity and a richness that speaks to us today. Is that Jesus calling? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Jay is personally receiving a call from Jesus at the moment. It'll go to voicemail. You have to, you have to tell us after worship what, what Jesus had to say. Fabulous. Perfect. Oh, my word. Don't you love it? Oh, gosh. This story still speaks, right? No matter the level of danger or risk you feel, no matter the ways God is already at work in our world, no matter the new or different ways we can cast a wide net, Jesus isn't just calling Jay. Jesus is calling you. Loved child of God that you are, fisherman or not, Jesus is calling you to join him in this work, to spread the good news and to show love to your neighbor. Answer the call, or keep answering the call, or respond to the voicemail, right? and reach out with a voice of hope. Amen.
are called together to follow Jesus, let us uh, join together in prayer for the church, for the world, and for all those in need. Let us pray. Gracious God, as Jesus called the fishermen to be his first disciples, he calls to us today. Empower us as individuals and as a community of faith to be open to your call. Give us wisdom as we spread your good news and show love to our neighbors. And God, you are our hope and our refuge, and you placed the fish in the sea. Guide our care of oceans and lakes and all creatures that live in them. Work through us to protect water sources and the people who depend on them. And God, you are a God of justice. We ask that you would be a model to the leaders of our nations and leaders of all nations of the world. As they lead, may they follow in your ways of justice and truth. Inspire them to bring about peace in the Middle East and in Ukraine. And Lord, you are a compassionate God. We pray for that you would keep safe those who live under the threat of violence and those living in poverty. We ask that you would bring healing to those who are ill or in pain, including Audrey, Ray, Brad, Cindy, Dan, Doug, Randy, Colleen, Brittany, Lynn, David, Jovita, and Pat. God, we place our needs and our hopes before you, trusting in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ. Amen. Well, as we uh, move towards our offering, we wanted to show you these pictures today. Last 
Sunday was Jan Green's retirement celebration. She was our office administrator. She actually worked uh, in some role in our church office for almost 25 years. And so we just, I wanted to celebrate today uh, Jan, first of all, and say well done, good and faithful servant, but also that this congregation is a place that supports our staff and call, calls people into positions and supports them so that they want to stay and, and be long-serving uh, servants. So we give thanks for, to you for supporting our staff and that we will continue to pray for our future staff and for all who serve in this place for the gifts that they bring together. Uh, so today, as you consider our offering, I remind you that your offerings make ministry happen here and in our community and around the world, as we just saw with our kids this morning, the impact their offerings are making. So there are various ways you can give. You can place your offering in the baskets uh, on the stands as you leave today. You can also always mail in a check. You can use the QR code that's on the screen or on your announcement sheet, or you can give through our website. So let us pray as we give thanks to God for all the gifts that are shared. Good and gracious God, receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Shape us as your people of generosity, of justice, and of kindness as we follow Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, as we prepare to uh, share Holy Communion today, uh, know that you are invited. All are welcome to receive the gifts that Jesus gives through this meal of his love and grace today. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I think I have a sign that it's actually warmer in here this Sunday than last Sunday. I have now had the second bug crawling up and along my bulletin up here. <laughs> oh, little bug friends go away. Well, just a few other notes about um, communion. If you're coming forward for communion, you'll see when the servers are ready in the front of your section. You'll just, we invite you to come forward row by row from the front to back. Uh, middle sections, you'll come down the center aisle and go back on the side aisles. Outside sections, you'll come up along the wall and then go back by those same aisles. When you reach uh, the server, the first server, please just hold out your hands. We'll drop a wafer into your hands. You can then step to the next server who holds the chalice, and you'll dip your wafer into the chalice. The larger section is red. That is wine. The smaller section is white. That is grape juice. You can then eat those together and return to your seats. Uh, if you need gluten-free wafers, those are available at all stations. More details are on the front of your announcement sheet. And if you have someone with you who doesn't take communion, please have them come forward for a blessing. So for those communing in place or at home, hear these words as you receive the meal. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. I invite the communion servers forward. Oh 
Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Who else would die for our redemption? Whose resurrection means our Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace, you have refreshed us with this heavenly food. Send us out strengthened to live out your call, proclaiming the good news of Christ and serving others in his name. Amen. And receive the blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. One, two, three, four. Wandering into the night. I try. 
Thanks be to God. Two, three, four.